Hi, my name is Bill Kinney. Um, I'm a math professor at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. This is the fourth part of a series I'm doing on basic kinds of calculations with normal curves. So far we still consider the same question and we'll continue to do so in this video. We're looking at the resting heart rates of all adult males in the whole world, say, and we're pretending we know it's what it's distributed like. It's normally distributed with a certain mean and a certain standard deviation. We're, trying to, we're interested in figuring out what percentage of men have a heart rate between 68, 60 and 84 beats per minute at rest. We saw that the normal curve is constructed in such a way that the area under the curve between the two numbers we're trying to find the percentage of people with that resting heart rate between uh, is the answer. We, using something called the 68.95.99.7 rule, we estimated that to be about 81.5% the answer. Then at the end of the last video we used a calculator to see that the answer was actually a little closer to 82 percent, more precisely, although we're assuming the model is accurate to say that's more precise. So let's look at that again. <clears throat> I'm going to change the window, window a little bit more from what I had before. I'm actually going to start y to be negative, negative 0 0.05 and go up to say positive 0.1 marks 0 0.01 apart and then the key thing to getting the answer what I showed you last time is to use this button that says DS, DISTR for distribution it's a yellow one so I have to hit the second function key I want to draw so I move over there and use shade norm I put the left end point 60 comma the right end point is 84 comma the mean of the distribution, which was 68, comma, the standard deviation, which was 8. And we get a picture of what I drew by hand and a more accurate estimate of the area that we're after. Right there. And, well, something a little bit kind of disappointed me here. The, the mean, 68, is right about there. This is 60 right here, which is one standard deviation of the below the mean. This this other tick mark here, see I think I put the tick marks eight units apart, is two standard deviations below the mean. Seems like it should be a little bit further to the left than it is. There, to the at the right end point of the shaded region, that's 84. That's two standard deviations above the mean. It would be nice to have a variable that represents how many standard deviations above or below the mean a particular number is, in this case the 60 and the 84. And there is such a variable. It's called the z variable in stats, sometimes called the z-score. And here's the formula. z, and almost, by the way, almost all mathematicians make their z with a horizontal line there because if they don't then it looks too much like a 2 sometimes. So z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. Think about this here. x minus mu, x is your, your data value or your number that you're thinking about. In this case, two numbers, 1684. Minus mu, that's going to be the, the signed, S-I-G-N-E-D, signed distance between x and mu. Positive if x is bigger than mu to the right of mu. Negative if x is to the left of mu, less than mu. If you take that sine distance and divide by a standard deviation, that's going to tell you how many standard deviations you are away from the mean and whether you're above or below. Think about it. If x is 84, mu again is 68, and sigma is 8, this calculation gives you z is 84 minus 68 divided by 8. 84 is 16 bigger than 8, bigger than 68. And since 8 is a standard deviation, that's two standard deviations. Z is 2. It's positive, so that's telling you that x was above the mean, because 84 minus 68 is positive. On the other hand, if x is 60, still mu is 68 and sigma is 8, then this formula is going to give you 60 minus 68, which is negative, divided by 8, 
negative 8 divided by 8 is negative 1, telling you you are one standard deviation below the mean. And that should make good sense. You can try other examples to, to reason this out. And ultimately, this is referring to something called the standard normal distribution. It's a very special normal distribution. Still looks bell-shaped. It's centered. Its mean is 0. It's centered at 0. And its standard deviation is 1. So this inflection point would be at a horizontal uh, position of 1, and this one would be negative 1. This is called the standard normal distribution. And if you use a table to help you answer the questions, this would be the table, the kind of table you'd be using. It would be a table for a standard normal distribution. I can figure out the answer to this question with a different normal distribution, with the standard normal. I need to change my scale. I'll go up to 1 here. This distribution has a smaller standard deviation, which is going to make it go higher, so the y max is going to be bigger. I'm going to answer the same question I did before, but now I'm going to use the standard normal distribution. 60 had a z value, a z score of negative 1. 84 had a z score of 2. The mean of the standard normal distribution is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. This will be shading a different area under a different curve, a different region, but it will have the same value for the area. Watch it. It's an analogous region under a different normal curve, the standard normal curve, and look at that. The area is the same as it was before, about 0.8186. And again, if you use a table in a book, um, <clears throat> they make the tables based on the standard normal distribution, which is what z-scores, partially what z-scores are good for then. Z-scores can also help us solve the other question. What resting heart rate is at the 92nd percentile? Let's see if we can do that in a couple minutes here. 92nd percentile means it's a high heart rate for one thing. 92% of the people have heart rates less than that. That's what it means. We're after a heart rate, a resting heart rate, such that 92% of all people, of all the adult males, have a heart rate less than that. Let's try to get a, a feel for what, what the answer might be. Is 84 at the 92nd percentile? Well, probably not. In fact, I know the area here was close to 0.82, and the area over here Right in there is about 0.135, and over there is pretty small, but it's if you add on 0.135 onto 0.815, you get something definitely bigger than 92. So the 92nd percentile somewhere is going to be somewhere less than 80. Probably bigger than 76, though. And for the purposes of this video, I'll just tell you how to find it fairly, fairly quickly here. Let me again do a, well, let me just get rid of this graph. Let's see. Clear drawing, okay. Um, it turns out that a z-score of about 1.4 is at the, about the 92nd percentile. I just happened to figure that out, and I won't tell you how. I'm putting a negative 5 in there because negative 5 is kind of far away from 0 to the left, relatively speaking, in this distribution. I'm going to put a 1.4 here. I'm doing the standard normal distribution. Think of the negative 5 as basically like a negative infinity. Okay, I just picked a number kind of far away from 0 on the negative side. Effectively, what we're after here is the area under the curve from 1.4 on down to the left of 1.4. It should be very close to 0.92. Let's see if it is. I'm going to go a little over time in this video. 
you are very close to 0.92. So effectively a z-score of 1.4 is effectively at the 92nd percentile. And that means we can then use this equation again to figure out what x heart rate in beats per minute is when z is 1.4. And in fact I can solve this equation for x. First multiply both sides by sigma and then add, add um, excuse me, yeah, add mu to both sides, and I'll do a little rearranging. X is going to be mu plus sigma times z. That's the equation we need. We'll use it here real quick. Mu is 68. The sigma that's, that we're using is 8. And the z that's at the 92nd percentile approximately for the z distribution is about 1.4. 8 times 1.4 is 11.2, 68 plus 11.2 is 79.2, approximately 79 beats per minute. Yes, that is between 76 and 84, like I guessed, is the, the if my numbers were accurate, would be the resting heart rate that's at the 92nd percentile for all heart rates. 92% of all adult males would have a heart rate, resting heart rate, less than that.